It appears like the Jets are down to one of four players for the fourth pick in the NFL draft. New Vegas odds reflect those four players and the likely outcome for the Jets. So let's talk about it. Let's break it down, and I'll give you my thoughts on what I think the Jets should do with the fourth overall pick. Let's hit it and get it started. Hit it! Welcome in, everyone. My name is Jake Asman. This is the Jake Asman Show. The Jets just had one of their greatest wins in the last 20 something years, and we're going to break it all down. Zach Wilson, Robert Sawa, CJ Mosley, Joe Douglas, Elijah Moore, Makai Beckton, Michael Carter, Braxton Barrios. A super chat, you cut the line. Smash the like button down below. That's that thumbs up icon. Now, Let's talk about the New York Jets. Here we go on a Monday program. Hope everyone had a fantastic weekend. I am back in Houston, meaning I will be back on the radio show coming up this afternoon. Appreciate everyone once again for the kind words and the support, especially to everyone that donated to the Andrew Wagner Memorial GoFundMe. That GoFundMe now has over $40,000 raised. Just an incredible number. And Jet fans, you guys are responsible for at least $1,000 of that, plus probably more than that. I have to go through the totals. But thank you to everyone who donated. means a ton, and I really sincerely appreciate it, as does my entire family. But that being said, let's talk Jets. Let's dive in. There's a lot happening here, and I want to talk about specifically the fourth overall pick in the NFL draft. We know the Jets have two picks in the top 10, number four, and then of course, number 10. But specifically with the fourth overall pick, I want to dive into that because at number 10, there's a lot of variables with number 10, right? I mean, how many players do the Jets want that goes in front of them before they're up again at number 10? Do they consider moving back? What happens with Carolina at six? If they take a quarterback, all of a sudden there could be other teams trying to get into the top 10 to get the other top quarterback they deem in this draft. So it's hard to really project number 10. I do think if the draft was held today, the Jets would take a receiver with that pick, but I don't know which one just yet. At four, I think it's fascinating. And I think it's really down to four players for the fourth overall pick. Now, I don't think Aiden Hutchinson is making it to four, so I'm ruling him out. All right, I just don't see the scenario where he is there. But the other players I'm going to run through, there is a chance that they absolutely could be there at number four. So these are the four players that I think the Jets are in serious conversations with Uh, to decide whether or not they want to pull the trigger and draft them. And I'm going based off of my own insider knowledge, what I'm hearing about what the Texans could do at number three. I'm also going off the latest odds from Las Vegas, including the odds from BUSR on their official sports book. So putting it all together as we are, you know, a couple weeks away now from the draft, these are four players that I think the Jets are down to to decide what they do with that fourth pick. And the first player is obvious. It's Kayvon Thibodeau. He might be the best player in this draft when push comes to the shove. You might say, what? Well, yeah, that's how he was viewed going into the college season and throughout most of the season. And only now are you starting to hear some perceived knocks on Thibodeau. People I talk to, though, that I trust say that it's way overblown and that this guy has a chance to be a legitimate star at the next level. You guys heard Cole Thompson with us on Friday's show from Sports Illustrated. He says Thibodeau is his best player in the draft. I thought Will Parkinson, who's been on the show, he was on the show last week, had a great tweet earlier about Kayvon Thibodeau. He tweeted, Thibodeau wanting to maximize his brand on and off the field and make a shit ton of money playing a kid's game shouldn't piss you off. He just says a lot of the things other p- others keep to themselves in regards to brands. He's a damn good prospect and it'll be a top five pick. There is no way Thibodeau gets past the Jets if he's there at number four. I just don't think it's possible. Even the people that have, quote-unquote, knocks on Thibodeau still have him going now in the top five. There's Buzz who will go number two to the Detroit Lions. I saw that today. Todd McShay had him going number three to the Texans in his latest mock draft, and it was McShay's intel at the Senior Bowl that really got this whole thing started with Thibodeau's perceived knocks in the first place. The reality is, if he's there, I think the Jets will take him. Now, the betting odds also reflect that. 
According to most sports books, including BUSR, Kayvon Thibodeau right now is the consensus favorite to be drafted number four by the Jets at plus 250. Now, that brings us to the next player here. And I think the Jets could possibly take Sauce Gardner with the pick at number four. If they were to take Sauce, though, to me, it means that the first three players in the draft we're all edge rushers, which I find unlikely. I don't think the Jets take Sauce. I think they take Thibodeau, but I think they could take Sauce if it goes, let's say, Hutchinson, Thibodeau, Walker, or Hutchinson, Walker, Thibodeau, like it was in McShay's mock draft. I think they, in this scenario, would take Sauce at four, knowing full well if they want a receiver at 10, there'll be one they like they could get in that spot. But then, you wonder about the pass rush situation. Do they trade back into round one to get someone? Do they bank on Ebiketti or Boy Mafe being there at number 35? Maybe, but I think in this unique scenario, Sauce Gardner is one of the four players that I think could be in play at number four for the Jets. The betting odds reflect that as well. Sauce Gardner plus 350 in second place to go number four to the New York Jets. Then we get to my final two players here. And at plus 450 odds, Jermaine Johnson is the has the third highest odds to be the Jets pick at number four. In my personal odds, I would say the Jets would go Jermaine Johnson before Sauce Gardner at four. I think the Jets really like Jermaine Johnson. They just had him for a visit, and Jermaine Johnson's liking some tweets about playing for the Jets. He's tweeting out that he's the best player in this draft. He's tweeting that out from the Jets training facility. If you go look at the geotag on his Twitter, it says Florham Park, New Jersey. You don't just tweet randomly from Florham Park. You're visiting with the Jets. So in my personal rankings, I think it's more likely they take Johnson at four than Sauce, but Vegas thinks it's reverse. They think it would be Thibodeau as the favorite. Second favorite would be Sauce. And then at number, uh, number three uh, on the list would be Jermaine Johnson. And then the final player, if he's there at four, you got to consider him on the list. I don't think he'll be there at four, though. And that's Trevon Walker at plus 500, um, who is the, obviously, stud out of Georgia. Now, he didn't have the production in college, but people look at him as a guy that is a physical freak, uh, you know, could be like the Alden Smith-type player, you know, and that, you know, kind of goes ahead of where people think he should go and ends up being a terrific pro before it obviously, you know, came apart at the seams for him. But through two years, Alden Smith had more sacks than any player in NFL history. And he went ahead of a, a guy like J.J. Watt, who slipped to number 11 in that draft that year. And the Texans, obviously, uh, that worked out okay, I'd say, for J.J. Um, so I, I would say Trevon Walker would be the last player the Jets would take at number four. Now, you might say, Jake, what about Akeem Aquanu and Evan Neal? In my heart of hearts, I don't see the Jets taking an offensive lineman at number four. If they were to take one, I'd say it'd be icky, but I don't see that being the move the Jets will make here. And the betting odds reflect that. Akeem Aquano is plus 900 to be drafted number four. I also don't think he's going to be there. I think Icky's goes number three to the Texans. So I don't think that will be in play for the Jets. And then Evan Neal is behind Aquano at plus 1,000. If you use the betting odds to kind of paint the picture here, it is clear Vegas thinks it's really three players for four spots. I included Walker in, in case he does fall. And, you know, maybe the Lions end up taking Thibodeau at number two. But I think if it comes down to it, it's Thibodeau, Johnson, Gardner, Walker. I don't know if the Jets are going to love Walker like some apparently think they're going to. That's not the vibe I get. I also don't know, as I pointed out, if Walker's going to be there. So my read on the situation is the Jets would go Thibodeau, Gardner, Johnson, Walker, or Thibodeau, Johnson, Gardner, Walker. That's my kind of feel on it. Like Walker to me is not your traditional, you line him up at edge and he's that type of rusher. Like he's kind of more of the Leonard Williams, you know, Quinn and Williams type of player, right? Like he's disruptive, but he's not disruptive as a pure edge. I think the Jets need a pure edge. That's Jermaine Johnson. That's Kayvon Thibodeau. You know, my preference, as I've said all along, would be Thibodeau, Johnson, Sauce. You know, the only way I would take Sauce would be if the first three edge guys are, are off the board. And, you know, at that point, if Trevon Walker is considered one of the first three edge guys, I'd rather just take Jermaine Johnson at number four over going with a corner. And then I'll get my receiver at number 10 and go from there. My philosophy this entire time has been help the quarterback, get after the quarterback. You're getting after the quarterback if you take a pass rusher with that fourth overall pick. So I know the caption of this video says four players uh, for the Jets at number four. I truthfully think it's really three. 
I think it's between Johnson, Thibodeau, and Sauce for that number three spot. And that's my initial read on it. And then at 10, as I said, you go wide receiver from there and let the draft get underway. With that being said, let's open it up. Comments, questions, whatever is on your guys' mind. I appreciate everyone for taking the time to watch today's video. Please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button as well, and uh, it will go a long way towards helping this channel continue to grow. Super Chats will, in fact, cut the line, so get your comments and questions in right now. And before we dive in, we were just talking about betting odds. Let's talk about my official sports book, and that is BUSR. BUSR, you're not only going to find a great sports book, but an online casino, a horse racing book, a race book unlike any other. And look, I've been talking about BUSR now for a while. It's super easy to start betting with them. You sign up easily by going over to BUSR.com slash Asman. If you bet on the UFC, you're going to want to do it with BUSR. If you bet on boxing, we got a big fight coming up Saturday night. Errol Spence in action. Bet on the fight at BUSR.com slash Asman. You also can make future bets. You also could bet, as I was just talking about, on the NFL draft. Live customer support 24-7. And new signups will get a 100% free play up to $2,500 and $25 in casino trips. So start betting on sports right now. And please, if you like my show, you'll like BUSR. Support them, BUSR.com slash Asman. All right, Jet fans, what are we thinking here? Number four, Jets are on the clock. What are they doing? Prestige says, Kayvon at four, no other option worthy. Kayvon at four? Should be the pick for the Jet fans. I, I like. I don't. Anyone who's anti Thibodeau, I just you got to explain to me why. You got to explain to me why, because they're gonna pass on him. He's gonna go to the Giants and he's gonna end up being great, or he's gonna fall in the draft. And we're gonna be saying, how the hell did this guy fall? Uh, Steven says Lions had seven guys from their staff at Tibbs Pro Day, just like the Jets had a few years, uh, a few last year at Zach's Pro Day. Having all those people there says a lot. There's a chance Thibodeau's off the board at two. And then in this scenario, I would take Jermaine Johnson over Trevon Walker. I don't understand the Walker hype. I don't like drafting a guy based on potential. I like drafting a guy that we've seen do it in college, especially someone like Thibodeau that's done it at an elite pass rush level. Like, that's the reality. Like, the guy led college football on pressure rate. So, for the love of God, please take Kayvon Thibodeau. Like, I see T.A. Rugg. He doesn't want Kayvon. I don't get it. What's the mistake, T.A.? You tell me. Steven says, I don't care. I'm on the sauce train right now. What? So what's the plan at edge, though, if you take sauce at four? Because you still need a receiver. So are you taking Jermaine Johnson at 10, and then you're going to tell me you're going to trade into the round one to get a receiver? Like, we've gone through this exercise before. I did it the other day. Like, the idea that you could just trade back into round one for a receiver I don't know about that. There's a lot of teams that need receivers. All of a sudden, you know, you're you're maybe not going to be able to get the guy that you wanted. Like we could go through it quickly on teams I could see drafting a wide receiver on round one. Atlanta at eight, the Jets obviously at ten, uh, Washington at eleven, um, the Texans at thirteen could certainly take a wide receiver. Don't be surprised if the Eagles take a wide receiver with one of their picks. If New England takes a wide receiver with one of their picks, Green Bay's got two picks in the first round. I'd be shocked if one of those picks wasn't a receiver. Arizona, to replace Christian Kirk, could take a receiver. Dallas, losing Amari Cooper, they could use a receiver. The Bills have been linked to uh, to Traylon Burks as a late first-round pick. They could take a receiver. I mean, there's a lot of teams that need a receiver. Kansas City needs a receiver. So, my, my biggest hesitation with not taking a receiver at 10 and just saying we'll trade back in to get a receiver is there's a lot of teams that need a receiver. Are you going to get the guy that you truly wanted? I don't think you could wait at 35 or 38 and take someone that you believe in then. Matias says, I agree with Vegas. I think Vegas is on to something here. JJ says, no offensive lineman at 4 or 10. I think linemen could be in play in the second round. And if Linderbaum is there somehow, I mean, where do I sign for the Jets to draft him at 35 if he slips out of round one? I don't see that happening, though. But the point is I don't see a tackle at four or ten. I don't. Calvin says taking Johnson at four is too big of a reach. Is it, though? 
What if the Jets think he's the best pass rusher in this draft or one of them? I mean, they, they have the inside track. They got the inside knowledge. Steven says Karloftis is better than Johnson. Seems like Karloftis is going to slide. It could be could be a later round pick. I like George Karloftis. He could be a later round pick. Let's keep going here and get to some super chats. Now Jose checks in. Who's more likely to fall to 10, Sauce or Johnson? I would say Jermaine Johnson. I would say Jermaine Johnson's more likely to fall to 10. Sauce could end up with the Giants with one of their picks. Frankie checks in. Jake, could you see a scenario where we give Seattle our number four and get a pass rusher at 10? Doesn't seem desperate to me. Um, No, I don't. I mean, DK would obviously have to be in that, but I don't think the Jets would do that. I don't think the Jets want to help Seattle here. Nick says, would you trade number four in any scenario? I would move back in the right scenario. If the three best edge rushers are off the board and the Jets want to move back a couple spots for a team that wants to come up to get Icky or Neal, and they can move back a couple spots and still end up with Sauce and pick up an extra second-round pick in the process, I'd be open to something like that. I would not trade up from four. I would only trade back, and it would have to, and it would be contingent on you know one of the three edge guys not being on the board for the Jets to take. Frankie says, could you still see the Jets trading back? Yeah, just to follow up on that, I could. It depends on the scenario. I think they're more likely to trade back at 10 than they are four, though. Matt Shaw says, we haven't had a pass rusher since John Abraham. Yeah, and if I ever get the chance to to ask uh, Kayvon Thibodeau or Jermaine Johnson that question, my question would be, you're now a Jet. We haven't had a good pass rusher since John Abraham. Are you ready to be that guy? That'd be question number one. Rich Eisen wants sauce too much. Look, I'm, I'm I'm glad Rich wants sauce. I like sauce as well. I had cane sauce last night with my Raisin Canes. But corner at high, that high it depends on how the board plays. James checks in. 250 watching and only 48 likes. Hit it. We got 270 watching live right now. That's right. Please smash that like button down below. FM says, would you trade pick 10 for Terry? Uh, no, I would not. I don't think it would cost pick 10 to get him. I think it, I would trade the both twos to get them, though. RA says edge and wide receiver should be our first two picks. At this point, I don't care at what order we do it. I think it's better value to do edge first and receiver. But if the Jets come out and say, look, we know it's unconventional to take a receiver in the top four, but we think Garrett Wilson is that good. We have to take him. I'll listen to it. I don't love it. But if he's a great player, does it truly matter at the end of the day? Assuming they then get the edge at 10? Something to consider. I think it's unlikely, though, they take a receiver at four. I think they would move out of four to a team that wanted to come into the top five to maybe either get a quarterback or or one of the offensive linemen. Because I don't think the Jets move out of four if Thibodeau's on the board. I think they take Thibodeau and they don't think twice about it. James says, do you think Johnson could fall to 10? It's possible. Jay Johnson says Greg Cosell's comments on KT may, may have made some weary of him. He says Jermaine Johnson's the way to go. I haven't heard the full Cosell comments, Jay, but I have heard uh, Cosell say that he thinks Jermaine Johnson's the best edge in this class. Uh, June is a uh, Jet fan with sources saying that uh, the Jets stay at 10. It will be Williams. Can't say who, but write it down. It's a done deal. Nothing's a done deal at this point in April, June, but I. I like the fan with sources bit. Highlander Prime says, you're a thinking man's Jet fan, Jake. Thank you, I suppose. Uh, I'm with you about taking the best available receiver early. I don't get the love affair for Sauce, ignoring the PR and wide receiver at 4 or 10, a pass rush and wide receiver at 4 or 10. I was like, pump returner? I was like, we got Barrios. We're good. Uh, look. I like Sauce Gardner as much as you all do. I really do. I've been on Sauce Gardner being the best corner in this draft for a while now. I didn't want anything to do with Derek Stingley when we first started seeing those mocks because Stingley's played 10 games the last two years. You can't take him at 4 or 10. It made no sense. But Sauce Gardner at 4? I mean, come on. It just seems too high if there's an edge they really like that's available at 4. Seems too high. Now, if you tell me, all right, well, they just think Sauce is too good to pass up, 
He better be. Uh, he better come in right away and be one of the best players in the NFL if you're taking a corner that high. That's a risky pick. At a non-premium position, when it's not a dire position of need, I'm not saying the Jets' corner group is elite. It's not, but it's decent. All right, you add DJ Reed with Bryce Hall, Eccles, Carter. You want to fix your secondary? Improve your pass rush. All right? Have Thibodeau opposite Carl Lawson with Quinnen, Bryce Huff, and JFM on your defensive line. Nick says, why is everyone forgetting the Jets have no linebackers other than Mosley? I don't think anyone's forgetting that. They need to draft the linebacker relatively high in this draft. One of the second-round picks could easily be a linebacker. Easily. Or maybe they trade for Devin Lloyd or N'Kobe Dean. Matias says you might be able to trade back up into the first for an edge rusher like Carl Optus. What's the drop-off, though, from Carl Optus to the other guys? That's the question you have to ask. Chris says, would you trade 10 and 35 for both those Saints picks? Uh, yeah, I think the Saints would say no, though. The, the, the Saints have picked 16 and 18, right? Yeah, it's 16 and 18 the Saints have. So why would they do that? What do they get out of that? They get to move up to 10? I mean, in let, the only way they would do that, Chris, would be if they want a quarterback that's there at 10 for them. That would be the only way. You know, let's say it's Kenny Pickett they identify. Because I think Malik Willis is going six to Carolina. That's my feel right now on when the first quarterback off the board is. Um, so basically, the Saints would only do that if there's someone they need to get to at 10. Keep going here with your questions, comments. What else we got? Uh, Tarnell says, I'm getting sauce. Cane sauce or Chick-fil-A? Your thoughts. FM says, Jake, would you like Trevon Walker at four? I don't see the hype with Walker. Maybe I'm going to regret saying that. I don't know. I'm weary of a guy that's a workout freak that, you know, oh, well, you know, he, his production is going to be great at the next level. Like, there's, there's something about that that concerns me a little bit. Has a lot of, oh, well, you know, Leonard Williams could be the best player in the draft vibes. I don't know about that one. Highlander Prime says, what do you think about Alec Pierce at 38 or 69 if he's there? If he's there at 69 and the Jets already took a receiver in round one and they didn't take another one in the second round, I would have no problem using the 69th overall pick on a very nice player in Alec Pierce. So, yeah, 69, yes. 38, my preference would be George Pickens uh, if I'm going to go receiver in the second round. Because I think Pickens is a first-round guy if he didn't get hurt. Uh, Matt Morris says super chat. If you think your question is important enough to post 20 times, uh, I don't know what question we're talking about here, but super chats do cut the line. Steven says, nice haircut, Jake. Thank you, Steven. I'm glad somebody noticed I got a haircut. My hair is a mess right now because I haven't put any, uh, product in today, but I did get a haircut when I was back in New York. It's one of the few positives of my New York trip. Very few positives. That and, like, I guess Peter Luger's, and I had a lot of Italian food. But other than that, it was not a good trip, unfortunately. Uh, let's see. June the Jet says, KT, if available at four, if not, it's sauce. I'm not as convinced as you guys are the Jets are taking sauce at four. I'm really not. Honestly, there's a chance the Jets might take Ikea Quanu before they would take sauce because Joe Douglas values the offensive line and wants Becton insurance, essentially. The AZN Mike says, Jake, what if Brady would have tried to come with Sean Payton? Would you have enjoyed seeing that pairing with us instead of the Finns? Yeah, I would take Tom Brady and Sean Payton with the Jets um, instead of the Dolphins. Yes, I would certainly take that. I'm glad that scenario is not happening, obviously. Uh, let's see. We got some we got some infighting in the comments. Uh jump in Joer. Rex, I uh, jump in Joe. No receiver at four. I would agree. I don't think they'll take a receiver at four. I think it's between once again, the one of these three players, I think is going to be jets. I'm not going to rule out Walker. I don't think Walker makes it to four. Thibodeau sauce Johnson. I think it's one of those three. Now, personally, I would be okay with Iki Aquano in the right scenario. I'd be okay with it. But I don't think the Jets are going to take Icky. I really don't. Patrick says, hit the like button, people. Thank you, Patrick. Appreciate your support. 
The like button is the thumbs up button. And uh, a lot of you asked me uh, earlier today, hey, is there a show today? Because I know I'm recording the show a little bit later than normal because I'm trying to get my life back on track here being in Houston. If you ever want to be notified when we go live, turn on notifications for this channel. It's that bell icon. You click that and you'll get an alert on your YouTube app or I don't know, maybe you get an email. I don't know how it works, but you'll get notified some way, somehow on when we go live for those who want to enjoy the live program. Um, let's see. The real Jay says Williams and Pickens would transform this whole offense. I mean, if you told me the Jets took Jamison Williams at 10 and George Pickens at 38, I have no issue with that. If you're going to double down on a position, double down on a position that helps your young quarterback take the next step in year two. Also, just to clarify, uh, looking at the Saints, the Saints here, I have confirmed with tankathon.com, the New Orleans Saints own pick 16 and they own pick 19 now after the trades they made with the Philadelphia Eagles. So keep that in mind. The Saints now have two first-round picks, as we all know. All right, let's get to the Super Chats. Here we go. This one is from NY to Florida. Hey, Jake, fun exercise. Put your Isaac McCagden Bradway GM hats on. Who do they pick? I'll take McCagden and Trey McBride. So you're saying they would take Trey McBride in the first round, NY? I mean, if McCagden was running the Jets, they probably would take a safety at four. And they would probably take, uh, you know, a defensive lineman at 10. They probably would take Kyle Hamilton and, like, Jordan Davis. That'd be so Jets, so McCagden. Uh, Isaac would just pick Buss. I don't know which players he would have picked. Even if he picked players that we maybe even liked, they were they would have turned out to be Buss. You know, Isaac probably would have took Stingley at number four. Because remember, he took D. Milner, who was injury-prone and was terrible with the Jets. I bet you Stingley would have been a John Isaac pick. And Terry Bradway... I don't know. Did Bradway have a certain trend like Isaac and McCagnan did? I'd have to think about that one. But I would start there if I'm going to put my terrible past New York Jets general manager hat on. Aaron checks in with a super chat. He cuts the line. KT needs to be taken. If he's not there, then Johnson. Pass rushers help the play of the CB. I like Sauce at 10. If he falls, not four. Let's go Jets. I almost rather the Jets just take Johnson at four and then Sauce at 10 and he's there and then do whatever it takes to get a receiver in the first round by trading back in. It's risky, as I've outlined, but I'm going to hope Joe Douglas knows how to navigate the draft board and could do that. i rather that than taking Sauce at four. I, I just think it's not a good use of resources to take a corner that high. Not when you need a pass rusher. Oh, but Jake, well, what if Johnson's there at 10? And what if he's not? And what if your grades on some of these other rushers isn't nearly as high? Got to consider that as well. Who is 007 says, hey, Jake, I'm glad to see you back. Once again, sorry for your loss. Thank you, 007. Appreciate your support. Casey says, no London at 10. Drake London, I think, is absolutely in play at 10 for the Jets. Absolutely in play for the Jets. He should be. Joe checks in with a super chat. He cuts the line. Hey, Jake, sorry I'm late on this, but my condolences. Thank you so much, Joe. Appreciate it. Love the show. Think we should pass on linebacker until third or later. Thoughts? If Chad Mumma is there in the second round and the Jets like him, he's a guy I would take at 38. They need another linebacker, Joe. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that um, you know they they are definitely going to do it in the second round because I, I don't know if they definitely will, but I think in round three, pick 69, linebackers in play. Random Film Stat says, would you be open to Tyler Algier from BYU? If so, watch this forced fumble versus Arizona State. It will make you want him on the Jets. Yeah, he it's, he to me is a mid-round running back pick for this team, and he's a bruiser. Perfect compliment to Michael Carter. Plus, let's get another BYU Cougar on the Jets. That's what, that way all our uh, Jet fans that are now out in Provo have another guy to root for. And I love the, the BYU Jet fans. I hear from you guys all the time on Twitter. Vincer says, Jason Morrow, Hall of Famer. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I, full disclosure, though, I liked that pick when they made it. The two things that doomed Jason Morrow was this. One, Mike Francesa thought it was a great pick. And two, John Isaac made that pick. So you had the kiss of death from both those guys, and that is what I think doomed Jason Morrow. John says, Jets need defense. They got manhandled all last year. 
They also need offense, John. You might have heard they invested the second overall pick in a quarterback last year that needs to take a big step in year two. Otherwise, it doesn't matter. They could have the 86 Bears defense, and in today's NFL, you're not going to win. Actually, they, I, the 85 Bears, so the 86. Uh, Jake, thoughts on Chris Olave at 10? Chris Olave is, let me think, Garrett Wilson. Drake London, Chris Olave, Jameson Williams. I would probably put Williams ahead of Olave, assuming he doesn't miss a lot of the year to the ACL. Olave is probably in my top four, top five receivers. I like Traylon Burks as well. He's still in my top five. But Olave, I like. I like Chris Olave a lot. I don't think they'll take him at 10, though. He could be a guy they target in a trade down. Gang Green checks in. JD can't keep waiting for great talent to come cheap. Take wide receiver Williams at 10 or watch him destroy the rest of the league on Sundays. Depends on health. Depends on health. Patrick says, do you think we will sign uh, LDT? Yes, I do think he ultimately gets the job back. FM says, Jake, who wins the kicker job? I mean, it's either Pinero or Greg the leg. I'll say Greg the leg wins the job. I think he has a bounce back year. Melvin says, regardless of what we do at four, we need to go wide receiver at 10. Unless you're moving back out of four and you have a couple extra picks that you somehow could then use on a receiver. Or you have a deal in place to move back and then still get a guy you really want. Like, I'm looking at the draft board right now. Let's say the Jets want to move out of 10. All right, say they move out of 10 and it's the Eagles that want to come up for a player or the Saints that want to come up for a player. At 16 or 15 or 16, you're still in range to get a receiver. So you can maybe make that move. But I agree with you, Melvin. Right now, if the draft was today, to me, I'd go Thibodeau and Garrett Wilson. Like, that's my perfect scenario for the Jets right now. Craig says, who would you rank as the worst Jets head coaches of the last 30 years in order? I, I don't have time to rank all of them, Craig. There's been a lot. But number one to me is Adam Gase. Number two would be Rich Kotite. Um, you could probably put Kotite ahead of Gase, but, you know, I just – revisionist history, recency bias. I'm putting Gase at one. Um, I mean, Bowles is probably three, for being real. I mean, the last 30 years, so we're in the year 2022, so we're going back to the early 90s now. I mean, Pete Carroll didn't get a long enough opportunity. Probably never should have been fired, for being real. Uh, I mean, how far back do we really want to go here? Obviously, Rex would probably be one. Herm Edwards would be two. Well, he got Parcells as well. So I guess Parcells would probably be ahead of Herm because he did go to a championship game. And Parcells also wasn't here long enough, too. He only coached the team for three years. So this is a good exercise. Maybe maybe another video we could break down the, the top Jets coaches or worst Jets coaches in the last 30 years. But Gase and Kotite, I mean, that's where you start. Bowles probably three. Go from there. Tub King says, what a name. He's he's joining us live from the tub as well. Love tub. I actually watched Thib's interviews and no media snippets. He doesn't have an attitude problem. They twist his words. He's been taken out of context so many times this offseason. I quite frankly think what the media has done the Thibodeau to be disgusting at times. I really do. Like here in Houston, he had the comment that he's you know Jadavian Clowney 2.0 and Texans fans were like, oh my God, he wants to be Clowney. We can't take him. You read the full quote. He says he's Clowney with better pass rushing ability, which is everything Clowney wasn't. He was a lead against the run, but he never was that double-digit pass rush guy you thought you were getting when you used the first overall pick on him. Like, he's been taken out of context a lot. So keep that in mind. Uh, let's keep going here. We'll do, we'll do some more Q&A. John Mechie in round two is my preference. I guess it depends on his injury situation, Friggle. I think Mechie in the third round would be awesome. I don't know if he makes it there. 35 and 38 might be too high. Gabriel says, Jake, what's your dream realistic scenario for the Jets' first four picks? Gabriel, I'm glad you asked. I did a whole video on this yesterday. So I don't want to spill, I don't want to spoil it on the channel. Check out the video from yesterday. If you missed it, I went in depth on my ideal New York Jets. Mock draft for the first 40 picks. 
Michael says, reports broke saying Jags are taking Walker first overall. It's amazing how the media works. That is not the report, Michael. The report from Peter Schrager was some around the league think that Walker could be in play at number one. Not that he is going number one. That The Jags haven't made a decision yet. And because Trent Balky's their GM, who in the past has drafted guys based on athletic potential, like Alden Smith, he thinks there's a chance that they could take Trevon Walker at number one over Hutchinson. And if that happens, Hutchinson then goes number two to the Lions. And then at number three, I still think the Texans probably take Akeem Aquanu. And at four, the Jets then take Kayvon Thibodeau, which would be wonderful. This one is from Cruzen, who's a Giants fan. What's the chance of the Jets drafting an OT at four? I think it's I think it's unlikely, Cruz. I'd be surprised. I think it's unlikely. I think the Giants will have an opportunity to get either Quano or Neal, whoever the Texans don't take at number three. I think the Giants go O-line at five. They could take Sauce at seven. They could take Jermaine Johnson at seven. I mean, the the the, the Giants' best case scenario to me would be if Thibodeau somehow is there at five, they take him, and then they take Neal or they take Charles Cross at seven. If you get a, a, a unbelievable edge and then you get a great trench player uh, with your other pick, in the first round of the top 10, that's a hell of a draft. The 85 Bears also had a BYU quarterback. That's right. The Bears. That's right. The great Jim McMahon. Obi's watching. Any relation to Obi Toppin? Did you see Chris Sims' top five wide receiver? He has neither OSU wide receiver. I did. Look, I like Chris, but I just disagree with him. Tony says, Jake, where would you take a free safety to play with Whitehead? Uh, Jaquan Brisker in the second round was in my, I'll spoil one of the picks, was in my ideal mock from yesterday. He's a guy I would take. Also, you see the safeties that are available in this draft class. It's more reason why you don't take Kyle Hamilton in the top 10 if you're an NFL team. Like, let, let's put it in perspective. Do you guys remember the year Jamal Adams was taken? Yeah, Jamal Adams probably ends up being the best safety that was taken that year, as he should at number six when the Jets took him. But you know who also was in that draft? Buda Baker and Marcus Williams. They were not they were not taken in the first round. Sometimes it's okay to wait for safeties. So I think second round could be a sweet spot for the Jets to grab a safety. Jake, you forgot about Lou Holtz. Absolute worst. Well, he asked for the last 30 years. If we go back to the 70s, yeah, Lou Holtz would make the list. I mean, he quit on the middle of the team. Pedro says, Jake, what first round player combo at four and 10 would you, would make you rage? Oh, rage? Stingley and Hamilton. That's the rage quit, you know, scenario for me. Tony Stark checks in. Jake KT at four is cool, but your fanboy love for Garrett Wilson is confusing. He isn't top three wide receiver in this draft. I mean, fanboy love. I like Garrett Wilson. I don't think I've been fanboying for him at all. If any, you can you could argue I've been more of a fanboy for Thibodeau, and it's not even fanboying for Thibodeau. It's just defending the facts that he, to me, is the second best player in this draft, and if he's there at four, the Jets should take him. Um, I just disagree with you. I think Garrett Wilson is the most complete player in this class. He's got speed. He's fully or most complete wide receiver. He's got speed. He's healthy. Drake London's not healthy yet. Jamison Williams is not healthy yet. Garrett Wilson is, and he's only increased his draft stock. Plus, I heard he's been very impressive in interviews. So, teams like him. Herm was the start of the downfall. Nah, Herm was not the start of the downfall. The start of the downfall was when the when Woody Johnson fired Tannenbaum and kept Rex. They should have given them both another year together to turn it around, or they both should have been fired because splitting Tannenbaum from Rex and bringing in Isaac was when the downturn started for the New York Jets. Herm Edwards was not the start of the downfall because after they fired Herm after 05, where they, I guess technically they traded Herm to Kansas City, they hired Mangini and they went to the playoffs. So that was not the downfall. The downfall was after 2012, the Isaac and Tannenbaum fiasco. Becton and fourth pick to the Jags for number one overall. You're not doing that. Why would you do that? How, how does that help anyone here? Uh, Jake, what would you do if we traded up into the top three? I'd be shocked, AZN. I'd be shocked. 
Let's go to a super chat now. This is from our guy, NY to Florida. I believe he's saying he golfed with Jonathan Vilma. I golfed with Jonathan Vilma. Great guy. I loved him. Whipped my Vilma jersey out of the golf bag. Signed it. Took lots of pictures. Think defensive scheme change killed him. Let's get Chanel or Christian Harris at 38. Two guys that absolutely are in play at number 38, NY. Um, you know, as far as the scheme fit with Vilma, yeah. Jonathan Vilma, about a year ago, did a really good interview with Ryan Rossillo of The Ringer. And Rossillo asked him about leaving the Jets and getting traded to the Saints. And he went in depth about what happened with him and Mangini and all that. So check it out for those who are maybe interested in in that and that with Vilma. But that's a cool story, man. I'm also that's I, I've heard great things from Vilma. When I was home in New York, I saw an old picture of me wearing a 51 Jets Jonathan Vilma jersey. So love Vilma. Uh let's see. I don't understand why Tannenbaum is not a GM somewhere. Well, he was a GM twice. You, you don't get a third chance. He was a GM twice and he was not successful with the Dolphins or as successful with the Dolphins as he was with the Jets. So that's why. Tannenbaum tried to get in the mix for the Giants job. He was very pro Joe Judge as a way to maybe save his uh, you know, if the Giants were gonna keep Judge. Maybe they'd want to hire someone who wanted to work with them. So that'd be Tannenbaum. But the judge thing just blew up to a point, and every Giant fan knows they had to move on from. Uh, judge got himself fired. I truly believe that. If he didn't have that ridiculous press conference um, after one of the games where he was taking shots at everyone and basically defending himself for 12 minutes, I think Judge would have been given a third year. But I think he got himself fired. Jets Forever says Saw slash Hamilton at four or bust. Let's bust, Jets forever. Bust, bust, bust. Motivated T says, Tannenbaum said the Jets should take Wilson at four. That's why he's not a GM. Just shows you the belief that he has in, in Garrett Wilson. But I agree. I would not take a wide receiver at number four. George says, bring back the 80s Jets units. You know my thoughts, George. Absolutely. Chris says, I'm not worried about Tibbs' quote problems. Even if he does have some issues, we have true leaders to help guide him. If he hits the damn quarterback, does it really matter? Like, come on, man. You could be a diva if you're a defensive end. Hit the quarterback. It's a different than being a box safety. Like what Jamal Adams was. Steven says Alave greater than Wilson. It's it's all opinion. It all depends on who you talk to. Uh let's keep going here. Uh, let's see. Tub King checks in from the bathtub. I did a mock and shockingly if the saints trade into the top 10 for a quarterback, there's a realistic chance. Tibbs and sauce can be there for the jets. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I think so. So jet fans, you, 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 would your preference be sauce and Tibbs or let's say Tibbs and sauce. Cause I think Tibbs would go at four sauce at 10 over say Tibbs and, receiver of your choice at 10 like what's the consensus from the fan base right now you want to double up on those two defensive players then where are you getting the receiver wait to the second round are you trading back into round one are you assuming a dk metcalf trade is happening an aj brown trade or a debo samuel trade is happening like there are some jet fans that want thibodeau and then receiver there are others like tub king who seemingly wants thibodeau and then sauce so it's it's a fascinating case study here Uh, Nick says, Jake, you're too concerned about Williams' timeline for his return. He's not missing more than a few games, if any at all. Also, he'd be with a new team, so his transition when he does return will be smooth. Uh, well, here's the thing, Nick. You love Elijah Moore, right? I think we all do. It took him about six, seven games to really get going, and then he got hurt. All right, Jameson Williams is going to miss games. Then he's got to get going and build a relationship and chemistry with Zach. You're trying to win games this year, right? Hard to kind of work in a rookie receiver who is learning how to be an NFL player and learning the offense coming off injury. So I rather value the guy that's durable, that's going to be there from day one, that Zach Wilson can work with in OTAs, that Zach Wilson can work with all summer in training camp and establish chemistry with. So you hit the ground running right away. But if you tell me that Williams is clearly the best player on their board at receiver and they think his speed is too good to pass up, I'll listen to that. But 
I, I think the the injury timeline is not just about him missing a couple games. It's about him developing that chemistry with Zach Wilson for him to be successful right away because that's going to be really important for this team. Walla Walla Dose says, don't see New Orleans trading up whatsoever, though. I don't know why everyone does. Well, if they love one of these quarterbacks, maybe, but I tend to agree. I don't think New Orleans is going to move up. Just keep going with your comments and questions. If you have a super chat, please get it in now within the next couple of minutes because I got to wrap up and get ready for the radio show. Jason says, Sauce and Jermaine Johnson. PJ wants Tibbs and Wilson or Drake. See, like, that's the thing. It's like some of you want Sauce at four and then you want, you know, uh, an edge rusher. Where are you getting the receiver? That's my question. Luis wants edge and wide receiver. See, Luis is like me. John says you then trade back into the first for a wide receiver. Understandable, but for who? R.A. says Tibbs and a wide receiver. Wants Wilson, Williams, or London. Seems like the Jet fan, as far as receivers, is down to Wilson, Williams, or London. There are some Chris Olaves, but I don't think Olave is going to be a pick for the Jets at 10. Now, they did take a visit with him, and I think that's for the purpose of trading back and still getting him if they like him. Uh, Melvin says ZW 25 plus touchdowns, 10 interceptions and 3,500 yards. Where do I sign? Where do I sign? <laughs> Bless you to myself as Quinn Williams did to himself at the draft. My allergies are horrendous today, folks. Um, Matt B says the Jets will take Walker if he's there at four. Maybe. I hope they take Jermaine Johnson over Walker. Better production, more of a pure pass rusher, more of a guy I think Sala will like to coach up. Ogre says, Mims looks ripped and ready. Maybe an actual piece to the wide receiver corp. I don't think so. Can we not judge players on off-season workouts when they're not wearing pads? Like, I'm glad that Mims is working out with Moore and Zach Wilson in Arizona and all that, but that doesn't mean anything. Uh, it doesn't. Jeff Smith was hanging out with them, too. I mean, come on. Harold says, Jake, are you high on JJ? Wouldn't you be as high or higher on Walker? JJ transferred in part because of Walker. Last year's stats at Georgia for both. Walker, a true junior, had six sacks. JJ, redshirt junior, had five sacks in 2020. Yeah, but look at what Jermaine Johnson did in 2021. I it just, I don't know. I, I There's something about Trevon Walker that screams workout warrior to me, and I, I just don't know if I want to use the fourth pick on the draft on him. That's my personal opinion. If they take him, I'll root like hell for him. I hope I'm wrong. But I hope someone else takes Walker so the Jets don't. Like I spoke to someone that um that covered Trevon Walker at Georgia, and he told me he's like, I don't understand where all this hype in the top three is coming from. From so and just keep that in mind. It's not the end all be all. It's one person's opinion, but uh, I just I'm a little weary about Trevon Walker. <laughs> While I says bless you, thank you. You had to quote the great uh, Quinn Williams, no doubt about it. Michael says, wondering what wide receiver falls out of Wilson, London, and Alave. Uh, I think it's most likely to be Alave, Michael, but I don't think Alave is falling past the top 20. I think Alave is getting drafted within the first 20 picks. I think he's that good. Christian says, we kind of have three startable corners. Don't need a top 10 pick that isn't a scheme fit. I agree, but I think Sauce would fit any scheme. He's that good. But I don't think they should take a corner at four. My preference is edge over corner in these scenarios that we spoke about in today's video. With that being said, I want to thank everyone for taking the time to watch the show. Hey, spread the word. This channel is growing. We are reaching new heights. You can help support the show by telling all your friends if they like the Jets to watch this program each and every day. Hit the subscribe button on the right-hand side of the screen. A couple big guest announcements to talk about. Tomorrow, Michael Nania from Jets X Factor will be joining us in the morning around... Uh, 10 30 Eastern time to talk all things jets. And then we will be talking to the great Connor Rogers, diehard jet fan badlands podcast and bleacher report lead NFL draft analyst on Wednesday's show um, around the same time. So be on the lookout for Nania and Rogers on the show this week. We are working on Bob with We are working on Joe Beningo and we are working on a certain pro football hall of famer that you jet fans know all too well. I'll leave it at that. Big things in store for the month of April. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and support the show. 
And you can also support the show by hitting the like button. That's that thumbs up icon right down below as well. For more Jet content, follow me on Twitter and Instagram. It's just my name, at Jake Asman. I appreciate all of you for watching the show. Let me get to this uh, super chat because I just saw it last second from Ron. He says, I'm late to the party. Debo, question mark. Sign me up, Ron. There's no indication the Niners are going to be trading him. So I went through that whole spiel. So I don't need to say anything else as my Apple Watch explodes. Appreciate you guys for watching. Please like the video. Please share this video on all your favorite platforms. My name is Jake Asman. This has been the Jake Asman Show for a Monday program. Hope everyone has a great rest of your day. And I'll talk to you guys soon. See you, everybody.